Welcome to Kosher.com. I'm Jamie Geller, host of Quick and Kosher, and today we are making a standing rib roast. This is the king of all beef roasts. This is the event roast. Whether it's a holiday or you just want to splurge and impress someone, your new boss, your new in-laws, your old in-laws, you get what I'm saying? This is the guy to make. So let me bring this over to here and give you a little 411 cooking 101 with a standing rib roast. What we want to do is have your butcher do all the hard work. Have him separate the meat from the rib bones, which are on the bottom, and then tie it back to the roast. And of course, we're happy to accommodate and do that for you here at kosher.com, because what you want, you want all the benefits of cooking with the bones, but you don't want to have to hassle with them when you go to serve and slice this roast later. So that's tied back to the bones, and you'll see the butcher leaves a thin layer of fat on top. You want that, that is what you are paying for. This is the flavor, and that thin layer of fat will actually baste and protect the roast while it's cooking. So this is our big guy, we'll put him aside, and we're gonna make our sauce. And this is a fabulous sauce. It's gonna make a great flavor uh, gravy for our roast. And we're gonna do one and a quarter cups of soy sauce. And that goes right in. And one and a quarter cups of brown sugar. Light brown sugar is great for this recipe. So let's get that in here. Wonderful. And then honey, because why not? These, this is the Mishpacha honey bear. It's actually part of the Manashevitz family. I happen to like it a lot. And um, they sell like 100,000 of these during holiday time. So apparently a few other people like it as well. A great sip with honey is remember, grease your measuring cup. We want about a half a cup of honey here. So let's get the two-handed squeeze here. Get our honey in there. That's good, it's a cute little bear. And it's fun when you're cooking with kids to use a honey bear. And then it should pour it right out, which is wonderful. And that's what's happening. I'll just get the little bit. Wonderful, and that's out. And then right out of a jar, sure, get mince if you want your own, but you can buy the prepared or the crushed or the minced garlic. So we're gonna go put that in there, and that's about a half of a cup of garlic. Great, and it's all in, and that's, that's it. So mix that together nicely. Don't let the honey stick to the bottom of the bowl. We wanna make sure we get all of that great sweet flavor in there. And we've sliced four onions. So let's get these onion slices on and around our roast. Just scattered around, it will give great flavor to the gravy, great flavor to the roast. we fabulous when they uh, cook together and caramelize a bit. Get that in there, wonderful. And then let's bring our roast over so we can just dump everything on top. My favorite technical cooking term, the dump. Okay, and let's put this on top. And this is wonderful. Now. Most important, well, there's a lot of most importance here, I'll tell you a bunch of them, but one of the most important, let's get all the honey out here, is that your roast is room temperature when you go to bake it, because it will bake evenly, and that will ensure that you don't have really well done ends in a really raw uh, center of your roast. So we're gonna put this in the oven and we're gonna sear it 450 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes that will lock in all the flavor and the juices and make that outside, that crunchy, crusty outside and a really tender inside. So 10 to 15 minutes at 450 and then come over here to the oven and then we'll lower the temperature and cook it for the remainder of the time at a lower temperature. At about like 325 for the remainder of the two hours. And throw that in there. Okay, so you don't want to ruin this roast. So the best test for doneness is actually a thermometer read. You wanna get an internal temperature of 120 degrees. So start checking your roast, get a digital thermometer about half an hour before the estimated cooking time. Once it reaches 120 degrees, take it out and let it rest for about 15 to 20 minutes, at which point the internal temperature will rise to like 125 or 130, and that's for medium rare. So we've got a roast here through the magic of television. We're all ready to show you. Here is the king. Whoa, mama. Okay, this looks just beautiful. Exactly what we want. It's been resting, so we can just gently take it off. Take it out of the rack. I'm gonna cut off our twine here. And this is great because this is where that butcher work comes into play for you and you don't have to worry about the bones. We'll reserve some of these onions for later for garnish. We're just gonna take this twine right on off. Just cut it right off. Perfect. Now, carving is like a total art. So either you or invest 
in getting to know someone that's good at it, a husband, a neighbor, a neighbor's husband, that great uncle of yours, whatever it is, you don't want to ruin this roast. Okay, I'm just going to flip this guy around just to make it a little easier for carving. So we're going to hold the fork just to secure the meat. I'm going to take our carving knife. So we're going to do nice long strokes here. Okay, nice, thick, juicy slices. This is exactly what we want. Perfect, medium rare. This is the meal to impress. Your standing rib roast is ready. Serve it and you'll feel like a queen in the kitchen. Thank you for joining us here at kosher.com. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Quick and Kosher. And remember, kosher.com is the world's largest kosher supermarket. So for the absolute freshest and finest cuts of meat, just like the standing rib roast you just saw, or anything else your little heart may desire, scrumptious bakery products, and the largest selection of beautiful gourmet gift baskets, shop at kosher.com. We'll deliver all that and more, everything you saw here in this recipe, and whatever else you want, right to your door.